Good morning, Arcade Church. It is great to be here with you. And uh, I'm here with my wife, Annie. Um, she's the pretty one down front. There's other pretty ones, but she's my pretty one here on the front row. And uh, it is just a privilege and a joy to be here. Like Craig said, we have been friends of Arcade Church for decades. And uh, when we were first planting our church, uh, Arcade hosted the prayer gathering for church planters here. And so that goes back 22 some years. And, and uh, Dan Bryant was that encourager in that group. And, and so I, I come here and I feel at home. And I come here and I think, I'm old. How did 22 years go that quick? And so, uh, so, but it is great to be here. And I love that I have the privilege to be here and speak to you today. And you're in the midst of this series called Reconstruct. And Pastor Craig and the staff here are teaching and leading you as they walk through the Apostles' Creed. And, and I watched the, the message last week, and I was so encouraged by that because it's one of the things that we use in, uh, in Iglesias de la Hueste in our training is we have taken the Apostles' Creed, and it is our doctrines class. And so I love it. And so today, as, as we go through scripture, uh, I'm going to say some words that you're going to say like, oh, that's from the creed. And, and one of the things that I think has been important for us is I, I read reconstruct, but I first thought recapture. And that's the word that that's been for us. We are recapturing the Apostles' Creed as something important for us to say, this is who we are. This is what identifies us. And this is where we can stand and be united as the body of Christ. In Iglesias de la Oeste, we say we exist to train and equip, mobilize, and care for healthy leaders. We want to see healthy church leaders in every Spanish-speaking country trained and equipped to advance the gospel, impacting their communities, their nations, and the world. We want to see them mobilized. We want to see the church active, expanding in their local community, transforming their nations, and going to the ends of the earth. And we want to see those healthy leaders pastored and cared for. And we have the privilege right now to do that, as Craig said, training and equipping in 10 countries. We're currently planting churches or sending missionaries in seven countries. And we're seeing mobilization happen in the Spanish-speaking world because the same Spirit of God that was alive and empowered His church on Pentecost is the same Spirit of God that lives out Pentecost every day in His church. And that's what we have the privilege to do as Iglesias de la Oeste. Watch the Spirit of God move in power and try to keep up and participate in what he's doing. Annie and I, we not only get to lead Iglesias de la Oeste, but we get to be part of a wonderful family. Uh, Annie and I have three kids there's going to be a quiz on this. We're going to do some, some keeping track of some numbers here. We have three kids. Uh, our oldest is Daniel. Uh, Daniel is uh, just finishing up his biochemistry degree at Cal Baptist University, and he is married to Danielle. So Daniel and Danielle, we like to keep it simple, all right? So we just call them the Dans. The Dans, the Dans were married in 2021, June of 2021. Remember that, there will be a test. Then we have Benjamin, and Benjamin is our Latino de corazón. He is a Mexican in his heart. And when we moved down there, we knew with Ben, that kid's never going back. And he has now married Sarah, a Mexican girl, and we are so excited for them. They live in Ensenada. Uh, he is starting his first day of work tomorrow in uh, the very first Christian school in Ensenada. And so he will teach. Yeah, that's fun. And, and so Ben will teach uh, English which that's good, he speaks that, and PE, and uh, so that's good. So I'm excited to, to hear those stories. And Ben and Sarah, they have a 
panecito in el horno, a bun in the oven. And uh, so we're excited for little panecito to come in November. And Ben and Sarah, they were married in August of 2022. I remember that. 2021, 2022. Then we have Kate. Kate's our youngest, and uh, she is in her junior year in college. And a little over a year ago, I had this brilliant idea. We would fly in young people from all of the countries that we work in. We'd fly in these young people for a, a global missions conference. And I had this wonderful idea. We love Jorge and Claire from Spain, so let's fly them in to stay in our house for a month. What a moron dad I am. Because about day three of that visit, it was clear that Jorge had intentions. And dads, let me tell you, that was a long month. Well, Jorge and Claire will be getting married on December 22nd, uh, 20, what, Kate, sorry, whoever. Jorge and Kate, I can't even keep my kids straight. Jorge and Kate We'll get married on December 22nd of 2023. Three weddings in 30 months, worst plan ever. Thank God we look at our savings account and it's in pesos so it looks bigger than it is. But I love weddings, right? I love weddings. I love as a pastor getting to participate in them. And I got to be honest, I I love even as a dad. Uh, I love being part of a wedding. It is a giant party where you celebrate people declaring their love before a bunch of people and more importantly before God. And so I love the party. I love all that. And one of the things that I love is if you've ever been part of helping on the day of a wedding, there is this transformation that happens in the life of the bride. The bride in the morning, I'm thinking specifically of the last wedding that we had, Ben and Sarah, the morning of, the bride's a little bit crazy, right? Got that wild eye, there's a thousand details that she wants to make sure is perfect, and she cannot trust anyone with any of those details. So she's in the sweatpants and the sweatsuit, and she, her hair's a frazzled, and she's barking orders. Bridezilla is there for a reason, right? And then she goes away for a little bit, And the next time you see her are when those doors open and that previously psychotic woman is now transformed. Not a hair out of order. The dress, magnificent. Makeup done right. Not one little blemish. The transformation. And I love that picture because we, friends, are called the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. And I got to be honest with you. And if we're really honest with ourselves, most of us live like that morning bride <laughs> frazzled, hair a mess. Life in chaos, panicked. But Jesus, I love those words, but Jesus, but God has transformed us into the bride of Christ, holy, blameless, without blemish. And today, church, I want to share with you about how we are the beautiful bride of Christ and we, Arcade, are part of this global church where the beauty of God is lived out in every nation and the way that people are seeing the glory of Jesus is through his spirit-filled church. And so maybe today you said, we were Russian, didn't get my makeup right, it's okay. I want you to know you're beautiful. 
because of what Jesus has done in your life. If you've got your Bibles today, or if you want to grab the Pew Bible, we're going to go and we're going to go to Ephesians 2. In your Pew Bibles, I think that's on page 967. And I'm going to have you turn there, and then I'm going to read out of a different version. So it's not 967, I was close. 977, 976 is where it'll start. Ephesians 2, verse 11 through verse 22. And I love this passage because we're going to see how Jesus has formed and created his church, how he has transformed us into the beautiful bride of Christ. We're going to see this because as we say in the Apostles' Creed, we're going to see that we are now one holy church brought together. And that means one holy church. We are part of this global interconnected body of Christ where the Spirit of God is at work and is transforming lives. Pentecost is happening today. Because that spirit is at work. And so Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, and I'm going to read from the New uh, International Version. And it says this, it says, Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, Remember that at the time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once so far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. He who has made the two groups One, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Jesus came and he preached peace to you. Peace to you who were once far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with all of God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, and in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. I love the Bible and this consistent pattern that we see through scripture of before and after transformation. And in this little passage, one of the things that we see is this before and after transformation. And I love in the Bible things that we see like from the beginning in Genesis 1 when there's nothing, it's darkness, nothing's developed in creation, it's utter chaos. And then God did what? He spoke and the earth came to exist. There's a before and an after in Genesis 1. I love seeing the before and after in Genesis 11, the story of Babel. And I love the story of Babel now more than ever because I live in the confusion of language. It means so much more to me now living in a second language than it ever did before. 
You see Babel and you see the confusion of languages and the divisions in nations. And what's the first thing that we see God do after is give a promise to Abraham of the after that's coming. And you, Abraham, will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. We start to see promise of how God's going to restore. And we can continue watching this movement of God to take people who were before, as it says here in Ephesians 2, separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in their world. And what Paul's saying here, he's not saying that God wasn't in their world because we know God is in everybody's world. God transcends. But he's saying they lived like God didn't even exist. And I don't know about you, but we look at this and it says, this is all of our realities. This is where all of us live. We all were once separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship, foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in our lives. In Spanish, to say the word you, I could say tu, tu. I could say usted, formal, pastor, usted. I could say ustedes, lots of people. Or if I want to be Spanish, I could say vosotros, right? Four ways for the word you. Now, you know, I'm not an expert in biblical languages, but if we go to the holy land of like, let's say, Tennessee, and we look at this word in English, we just say it just says you. So who's you? Is it just Annie or is it Annie and Beth or, you know? But in, in the holy land, they, they have some different ways to communicate you. They say you, that's one way. That just means one person. And then they say, hey, y'all, you know, and that's like a section of people. But if you want to talk about everybody, you say, all y'all, right? All y'all. And so in the biblical language of the state of Tennessee, this here is all y'all. We're excluded, separated from Christ, lost, without hope, without God, And that's our reality now as the people of God, but that is the reality of our world who live in this all y'all. We're seeing them live lives where they're separated from Christ. They're excluded from the promises of God. And you don't have to walk very far to see that they walk without hope and without God in their lives. Understanding our own personal reality is the way that we identify with the reality of the world. We were there. But God. But Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, excluded, separated, without hope, without God in your world, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. I love that it doesn't just say salvation. We know that he's talking about he's our salvation. That's up one section above in Ephesians 2. But now he's using words, he's our peace. And man, our world needs peace. But Jesus is now our peace. And then in that section, 14 through 18, you start to see this word, one, one. We are one holy church who has made the two groups, Israel, the promised chosen people, and all of us that were excluded from the promises, now we're one. He has united us. He has made peace with God for us. He's destroyed the barrier. He has created in himself one new humanity out of the two. 
He came and preached to you who are far away and those who are near, and through him we now both have access to the Father by one Spirit. I love the imagery of transformation. One of the things we do in Seminario del Oeste, one of the homework of our students as we study the gospel in the book of Romans is they have to find as many transformation illustrations that Paul uses in Romans. Slaves to son, enemies to friend. There's a before And there's an after. With blemish, the unblemished bride of Christ. You are part of the beautiful bride of Christ. The church of Jesus Christ. That he poured out his blood to make us holy, blameless, without fault. And you are part of the beautiful bride of Christ that is at work all over the world. And this same message of Jesus Christ that he's sharing here is being shared among the nations. And this last thing that I love, it talks about in verse 19, it says, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but now fellow citizens of God. And this doesn't say you're now like part of the American church. It doesn't say that we're part of the Mexican church. It says that we who've been brought near to God through the blood of Christ are fellow citizens with each other. One of the things that I miss most about Sacramento is its diversity. I love Sacramento. It really is a beautiful melting pot of of peoples. And I love that picture for us as a church because the church is a place where our beauty is found in our diversity and in our unity in the midst of diversity. It's okay that we're from different places. As a matter of fact, that's God's design. And it's okay that we think differently because you know what? We're going to think and learn and have opportunity to extend grace and mercy and make peace because out of all of us, God is making us one. One beautiful bride of Christ. And so today, I just want to share with you a couple of stories and a couple of things about what makes you beautiful. Some of you are thinking, well, I looked in the mirror today and I look pretty good. That's not what I'm saying, but you're right. You do look very good today. But here it is. This is what makes us beautiful as the beautiful bride of Christ. The first thing is this idea that by the blood of Christ, we have been made Holy. We are made holy by our union with Jesus. We are without blemish before God. Like I said, we are marriage wedding experts right now. And there is that moment that every bride worries that everything's not going to be perfect. And the Over the last three years, because we've done lots of weddings, we've also watched every wedding movie, right? Father of Bride, part one and part two. I'm always crying, especially now that I'm going to be the father of the bride. And we love the movie Big Fat Greek Wedding. Anybody here love that show? And we get to the morning of the wedding, and the bride is getting dressed, and what does she find on her face? A pimple, of course, of course. And what is the solution? Apply Windex, right? Because a bride can't have a blemish, we got to fix that. So the dad, he's got Windex ready. Well, I got to tell you, friends, we are the most blemished bride 
ever. But the blood of Christ was applied to us. And as it says in Colossians 1, 21 and 22, it says, you were once alienated from God, were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior before. But now, but now, God has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish, free from accusation. You are the beautiful bride of Christ because Jesus has made us that. All y'all are beautiful because Jesus has made us that. In the Old Testament, we have this imagery of the Passover lamb and his blood that is shed over the doorposts. And so the angel of death passes over those homes and they are saved, they are spared from the wrath of God. And this scripture says now, beautiful bride of Christ, because you are covered by the blood of Christ, by the spotless lamb of God, now the angel of death passes over because already, already, we are one holy church, blameless, without fault before God. I love that song. It was a new one for me that you sang today. It was not a new one for you because you guys were belting it out. But that song that talked about the the victory, the battle, I'm fighting the battle that the victory's already won. And that's what this talking about here. The blood of Christ has already been shed and those of us who once were separated far from God who now have come into a saving relationship with Jesus and placed our trust there, we are made holy, blameless, without fault before him. We are the one holy church of God. You are beautiful, holy, without blemish, Because we are united with Christ. That's what makes us beautiful. Our union with Christ. When God looks at me, he doesn't see my imperfections. He sees me united with Christ. He sees us, church, united with Christ. We have this couple, there are directors of education in our seminary, Seminario del Oeste, Amador and Yadira. And every once in a while, you know how Facebook will do this, Facebook will give you a memory, and they'll post these memories of themselves 12 years ago, before they had even come to Christ. And I love those pictures when they come up, and that always gives me really fun time to... Uh, Put a little jab in there. Because I got to tell you, you could see their lostness. You could see their separation from Christ. It's written in the way they take pictures with each other. It's written in their inability to smile with each other. Well, now we've walked with Amador and Yadira. We've watched him plant their church, grow in faith. He is our best teacher that we have. But now when you see them, you see joy. You see their beauty. It exudes, it's visible. Their before and after is recognizable. And that's what Jesus in our lives does. It should produce the fruit of the Spirit that is something visible so the world sees Jesus in us. I was thinking this morning, when we walk out of our door in the morning and the world takes notice of our presence in the culture, it ought to be like when the doors open on the church and the bride appears in the back and the world says, there's a transformation that I cannot believe has happened in that person. You're beautiful 
because you have been made holy without blemish, not because of Windex, but because of the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ has transformed us. You're beautiful because you aren't who we're talking about. We're talking about all y'all. You're made beautiful because you aren't an individual here. You're part of a community. You are part of a body of Christ. You are part of what happens here impacts what happens everywhere because each one of us are made complete in our unity in the midst of our diversity. We are one body functioning together. I love that Chris, as he was finishing his, his announcements, talked about how we want to attain the full measure, the full stature of Christ. And not one of you has that ability. We will attain the full measure of Christ as the Spirit-filled, Jesus-saved, loved by the Father, unite together, embracing our differences because we have different functions that we serve. I love that Ephesians 4 passage, just a couple chapters after this, where it talks about unity in the body, but in the same section that it talks about unity in the body, it also talks about the diversity in the body. What unifies us? We have the same Savior. We have the same Father. We have the same Spirit in us. We have the same baptism. We have that same faith. We see all this oneness that unites us. But then it says, each one of you, by God's grace, has been given different gifts. And each one of us is made complete when we live out those gifts in unity together. As individuals, we're not that beautiful. But together, we are the beautiful bride of Christ. One of our favorite places to work is in Cuba. And in Cuba, we currently have about 200 students. We have a staff of four Cubans. We're not able to do online classes there. So we send teams to go teach and then we empower the Cuban leadership to maintain that teaching rhythm that we have there. And we love to visit different churches and see God working in incredible ways there. But one of the things that I most love about the Cuban church is that its great strength is found in unity in the midst of its diversity. It is the easiest place to bring Baptists and Pentecostals together and anywhere and in between and say, we exist for the exact same purpose. We may do things differently, but we're brothers. We're one together. And one of the things that you see in the Cuban church is a lack of division among the church because they say, we have to multiply. We don't have time to divide. We have to multiply. And so churches from different uh, denominations will join together and say, well, let's both of us send 15, 20 people out and we'll plan a church together and we'll figure out what they are along the way. But, but we have to multiply. And you see the diversity where you'll see more Spaniard Cubans and you'll see Afro-Cubans and honestly, they're just Cubans, right? 
And there's great strength in their diversity. And I think the reason why is they always remember why they exist. They don't exist to be a Baptist church or a Pentecostal church. They exist to be the beautiful bride of Christ. That the island of Cuba would be awestruck by the glory of God in all of his majesty by the way Jesus is reflected through her. God is moving in his church. People are being saved in Arcade. People are being saved in Cuba. And we've had the privilege to send some Cubans to serve in North Africa. Where this year, teaching Cuban cultural classes to Muslim moms and kids, they were able to lead two entire families to the Lord and baptize them in the bathtub of their home. God is moving. And his bride is beautiful. And he's chosen to use you. And he's chosen to use y'all. You all have a place. Not one of you is unnecessary here. Not one of you is unimportant here. We are not complete until we all connect and commit to be part of this beautiful move of God. And I love this last section here. And I'll finish with this. We are beautiful because we are all made full members of the bride of Christ. There is no, I'm kind of a Christian. You either are a follower of Jesus, covered by the blood of Christ, filled with the spirit of God, or you aren't. There are no tears of citizenship. We are all full members, receiving a full portion of the inheritance of God. I love in Roma, uh, when, not Romanos, in Romans, we'll stick to the English, in Romans 8, I love in Romans 8 when Paul says, we're now co-heirs with Christ. Co, we share with Jesus. Jesus doesn't give us a little of what he has. We share everything with him, the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. I get to teach this one class, and it's pastors, missionaries, in seven different countries, among five different time zones, the poor Argentinian girl, she gets to go to sleep sometime after midnight. And I love to hear all the different expressions of how the church is moving. Like I go to teach, but really I just want to hear stories, right? What's God doing in Peru among the indigenous people there? Johan, that's incredible. That's way better than anything I had planned to teach. What's God doing in the city of Argentina? You're part of a Taiwanese church in Buenos Aires that is reaching homeless and people in your streets. Man, I want to be part of that. You're Cuban migrants and you've led your coworkers at the restaurant that you work at all to the Lord in Miami. I want to be part of that. And one day, those actual words came out of my mouth. I want to be part of that. And the little Argentinian girl said, Pastor, you are. I 
was like, yes, I am part of that. Next time that there are baptisms up on this stage, I'm part of that. Not because I was here to preach, I'm part of it because I'm part of the beautiful bride of Christ. Next time dozens of people are baptized in the Caribbean Sea in Cuba, you're part of that. Not because we're your missionaries and we got to be part of it. No, you're part of it just because it's who you are. It is your identity. Today, someone in the world, I don't know where, but I know this happens daily, is finding a piece of scripture and the spirit of God is speaking to their heart and they're becoming part of us and we are part of them. And together, we are the beautiful bride of Christ. One holy church. We're not the American church. We're not even arcade church. Arcade church, you are part of one holy global church of God that is going to fulfill God's eternal purposes. It's done. We're just living it out. So let's live it well. I pray that when we exit our doors in the morning, it is like the bride stepping in and everyone saying, I recognize the transformation. Understand that you have a place in the beautiful bride of Christ. You are holy without blemish because of what Jesus has done in your life. Wake up every morning and be reminded of the gospel that has saved you. That's what unites us. The gospel of Jesus Christ, his blood has made us holy without blemish. In Arcade Church, and for a minute, I don't, I don't want to talk to all y'all. I want to talk to each of you individually for a minute. You personally, you need to commit to live out your unique function, your unique role within this beautiful body of Christ. You are needed, you are wanted, and you are loved. Arcade Church, thanks for being part of the beautiful bride of Christ. Let's pray together. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to gather here from different places, different backgrounds, showing up with different experiences, and yet here we're one. And not only here are we one, but we gathered here are one with those who are hidden in back rooms in China. With those that are silent and yet reflecting you in Muslim countries. We are one with Amador and Yadira, with Yamile in Cuba, with Johan in Peru. And together, we are your beautiful bride awaiting your return. But in the waiting, we are living out our hope actively reflecting your glory, sharing that you are the peacemaker, proclaiming that you are 
our one Father. That Jesus, you are the only Savior. And that we have one same Spirit that unites us. God, I pray for Arcade Church. I pray for their leaders. I pray that their leadership would reflect your goodness and your glory. I pray for wisdom as they lead this church to be a beacon of truth and a beacon of hope in this community. I thank you for godly, healthy leaders who are committed to making you known, Jesus. And I pray for each individual here at Arcade Church that this morning they would commit to living out their function, their purpose, finding their place in this beautiful bride of Christ. And I pray pray that they would leave here today knowing that they are needed to be part of this body, but more so that they would leave here today knowing that they are loved and wanted by the perfect Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and his son Jesus, who laid down his life for us to make peace between us and God so that we could be co-heirs with him, inheriting eternal life and sonship forever. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, Arcade Church. Please stay up here. I'd like to have Annie, if you'd like to come up here, please. And elders, pastors, and directors, if you can come up. Missions team, would you please come on up here? We want to lay hands on you guys and pray for you. And Vadim, would you mind wherever Vadim went? Get this. Thank you, Vadim. Appreciate it. And Beth actually serves on the board of Iglesias del West Day, yes, and does. so I've asked her to have a word of prayer. If you go ahead and stand, please, and just before the benediction, Beth is going to have a word of prayer, and uh, we want to just dedicate and hold up the Culps and the ministry that they have uh, down there and throughout the whole Latin-speaking world. We're so grateful to partner with you. Go ahead, Beth. Eternal Father, thank you for reminding we are part of your beautiful bride. Thank you for Jim and Annie saying yes to your spirit's leading. Lord, would you spirit continue to open doors, continue to connect them to the people who have been waiting to be led, to be mobilized, to be trained and equipped and to be cared for. Lord, I pray for their team, that you would strengthen them together as a unit, but individually in their homes as well. I pray for their family, for the baby on the way, for the wedding that's coming, that it will be just a season of joy and blessing for the whole Culp family. And Lord, I pray that as you move and as you work, that Jim and Annie stay strong and healthy and stay connected to Jesus, that your spirit just continually draws them closer and closer to your heart and that their eyes are open to exactly where you're leading them. Lord, thank you for what you've done in and through Jim and Annie um, in my life at Arcade Church and around the world. Lord, we ask that you would bless them beyond what they can even imagine. In your precious name we pray, amen. If you have questions about this episode, you can send them to info at arcadechurch.com. Visit arcadechurch.com for more information, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're notified when new episodes are made available.